So we were on the subject of emptiness, and we were talking about the emptiness of a pen, and we were asking, well, how the heck is emptiness going to help me? You know? So if understanding emptiness is important, then, then what does it do for me? How can it help me uh, get the things I want, be in the relationships I want, help other people? Why, why should understanding the pen help me and other people? So we were just talking about how the pen is like a blank movie screen. The emptiness of the pen means that the pen is like a blank white movie screen. And then we said that if a dog came in the room and they looked at the same object, they might see something that they would like to chew on. And if a human comes in the room and looks at the very same thing, uh, they will see a pen and they will see it as something to write with. So we concluded that the pen must be coming this way and the pen is not coming this way. If it were coming this way, then the dog would see a pen also. Or else I would want to chew it. Mm, which I do sometimes. Uh, so then we talked about, is it voluntary what my mind is doing? You see, is it, if my mind is somehow uh, putting an image of a pen on this thing, if my mind, if something is coming out of my mind and making me see a pen, laying a pen on this object, if that's coming from my own mind, is it voluntary? Is it something I can just choose to do? You see, because then things would be exciting. And, and that's the idea of positive thinking and just be positive, be happy, uh, and then things will change, you see? Uh, you can call it wishing, you can call it wanting, you can call it positive thinking, you can call it praying, it doesn't matter. Uh, can I just close my eyes? If the pen runs out of ink, uh, since the pen is coming from me, can I just close my eyes and wish more ink, more ink, more ink? If I'm just positive, if I think positively, uh, will the problems in my life change? Will my boss become a nicer person? Will my husband stop complaining? You see what I mean? If I'm just positive, if I wish that things were different, since they're coming from me, then, then shouldn't that be possible? And then we did an experiment and we closed our eyes and we wished that the pen had ink and, and it didn't get ink just because we wanted it. So we can conclude that the pen is coming from me. Uh, whether it has ink or not, is coming from me. But it's not something voluntary. I can't control the process in the present moment. Can I control it in the future? You see what I mean? Can I, can I make things happen? Even if I can't wish things into being one way or the other now, is there some process, is there some way in which I could uh, create the world I want and the relationships I want on the blank screen, on the emptiness of the world, which is which is filled in from my mind like a movie cam, like a movie projector. Uh, can, I, can I make things happen that I want to happen? Mm, and I did, okay, I, I did, all right. Uh, my Lama uh, challenged me to make a lot of money for uh, refugees. He challenged me to start a business in New York. It was the last thing I wanted to do. I have no interest in business. Uh, but he said, as an experiment, in the understanding of emptiness, you see if you can sculpt or create a future. Can you, can, you, can you make money using the principles we taught you? And we'll give the money away. We'll give it to poor people. Okay? And I did. And he taught me how to do it. You see? You can create your future. You can create the world and relationships that you want because they are coming from your mind. But you have to understand how they're coming from your mind. If you don't understand how they're coming from your mind, and you just try to wish a relationship to be a certain way, it's not going to work. And you know that, because you try. There's nobody who's having a bad relationship that wants to have a bad relationship. They're all wishing it would be good. But wishing doesn't change it. So how do you change it? Well, then you have to understand, why is it you're seeing a pen? What, what makes your mind project a picture of a pen onto this object, and that picture is so good that you can use it as a pen, all right? We're talking, we're not just talking the mind makes up something. We're talking the mind making up a thing which is so good that it works, and you can, you can write with it, or, or money, you can make money, you can make money that way, okay? So you just have to, we just have to understand how to put an image in the mind that is so strong that it becomes reality. How do you put an image in the mind that is so powerful, 
that it becomes what happens to you next week, you see? And for that, you un need to understand seeds, seeds in the mind. We say that uh, if you understand how to plant a seed within your own mind, then you can create the world you want. You can have the income you want. The, the company he asked me to make is now a quarter billion dollars, 10,000 people working there. And it was all created from seeds in the mind. Uh, so how do, you, how do you put a seed in the mind? If we just give a small example of a pen, and we understand how to put a seed in your mind, how to plant a seed in your mind, then you can, you can run with it. You can take it from there. You can, you can create the relationship you want. You can improve your health or your appearance. Uh, you can make money. And you can change the world. I mean, that's the whole point, isn't it? You could, you could create a world that doesn't have hunger or, or war. Uh, if you understand how to make a pen, eventually you can work up to creating a whole world. Okay? which we call mandala. That's the meaning of mandala, right? So how do you, how would you create a seed in your mind to see this object as a pen? And we know that, for example, the dog we were talking about doesn't have that seed in their mind, so they don't see this object as a pen, all right? How do you put a seed in your mind that will enable you to see a pen, that will open in the mind and then cause your mind to, to lay a picture of a pen on this object which is so good that you can write with it, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll show you, all right? I, let's say I want pens in the future. And then you can use it for dollars later, or you can use it for a boyfriend later, or you can use it for a thinner body or a stronger body. You can use it for whatever you want, or a world that doesn't have war in it. You see? You can use it for anything. How do you plant a seed in the mind for an object that you want? So, actually, you need another person. Uh, this, this, to plant a seed in the mind requires other people. You need other people. So, for a seed planter expert, uh, other people become very valuable and precious. You need other people. It's, you can plant a seed with yourself, but it's very weak and very small. You need other people with whom you can plant a seed. So, let's say I want pens next week in my future. I would like to have pens. And again, it could be a boyfriend, it could be a stronger body, it could be a million dollars, it doesn't matter. Or a world that doesn't have war. I, I want to see something a week or two weeks from now. How do I put the seed in my mind that will enable me to see that? So you look for someone who needs what you want. You see, Let's say I need pens. I want pens. I would like to have pens in my world next week or two weeks from now. So then I have to look around in my life. I need to find people who need what I want, you see? I need to find, in this case, someone who wants a pen. If I want money, I have to find people who, who desperately need money. If I want a, a new relationship, I have to find someone who wants a relationship. Mm -hmm. If I want to create peace in the world, uh, I have to find and help people create peace, okay? so. In the case of a pen, I look around and I try to find someone who needs a pen. I'm very sensitive to people who need a pen. Or I'm very sensitive to people who, who are looking for a, a new relationship. When I spot one, I jump on it and I grab them and I say, you need a pen. They say, yes, I, I really need a pen right now. Then I take my favorite pen. This happens to be my favorite kind of pen. This kind of pen is hard to get. Uh, it's from Japan. And I really like them. So I, I take my favorite pen, and I say, OK, I understand you need a pen. Then I, I slowly offer it to them, OK? I, my, my hand, by the way, my mind is watching my hand, right? I am watching one hand uh, with a pen that is approaching another. This is the other person's hand. And, and my mind is like a video camera. My mind is watching my hand go down to the other person's hand. And then there's a very crucial moment when the pen touches the other person's hand. And, I, and with the thought that I would like them to have the pen, because they need the pen right now, watch. I release the pen. I, I let go. And that's called giving. That action, that moment of, of thinking, they need this thing and I will give it to them. And you release 
you hold on your own pen. After you release it, it's not yours anymore. It becomes theirs. It is a very profound moment. Mine, 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 yours. When I go from mine to yours, when I think this pen is no longer mine, now this pen is yours, that, that perception, that thought, plants a seed in my mind for a pen. All right? That's cool. That's really cool. That moment of thought puts a seed for a pen in my mind. Then you, then you should ask me a question. You should say, what's the point? You, know? uh, you already have a pen. Why, why, why go give a pen if you're putting a seed in your mind for a pen? Why not just keep the pen? You see? That, that means you don't really understand the nature of seeds. Seeds are amazing. Uh, think about the seed which created your body. Okay, there was a little tiny uh, thing, looks like a tadpole, uh, sperm from your father. And then there was a little thing that looks like a donut, or I don't know what it looks like. Uh, it's the egg from your mother, right? And the uh, red egg and the white sperm. And then they, they meet. It's only a few cells. Uh, meet each other at your conception. And then for 50, 60, 70 years, your body is sustained by those two cells, few cells. Uh, those seeds, those two seeds, are strong enough. They have some amazing, miraculous power within the two seeds that for 50, 60, 70 years, all of the cells of your body, trillions upon trillions of cells, even at any given moment, are created from the two. The same is true of mental seeds, okay? Don't think it's less than that. Putting inside of my mind a single seed for a pen, okay? I give somebody a pen. When I release the pen, a single seed is planted within my mind. And then you have to get the feeling of how strong that is. That seed will grow in the same way that an acorn grows into an oak tree. It's not that I get one pen back in my life by offering someone else a pen. When I offer someone else a pen, when I offer someone else a pen, and, I, and a single seed is planted in my mind, then that multiplies in the, in the subconscious. Over time, uh, that single seed multiplies uh, constantly. And then many, many pens will come back to me. You see, because pens don't come back to me. It's that seeds are planted in my mind to see an object as a pen. And then, that happens over and over again. That, that seed will be repeated over and over again. Okay, so pens are not so important. Uh, but what about uh, if you wanted a relationship that was sustained? The relationship wouldn't go through that normal thing where it's really nice in the beginning and then it starts to go downhill. If you understood the seeds which created a relationship, then you could make a relationship which got better every year and sweeter every year. So let's talk about that next.